Uh, hello viewers, today we are going to discuss about uh, how anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome affects uh, pregnancy. Now nowadays we come across various patients who have bad obstetric history. That means they conceive but they cannot carry forward with this pregnancy and they lose the pregnancy either very early or there are uh, problems later on in pregnancy whereby she delivers early and uh, finally she loses the child. So there is a uh, basically how do you uh, classify that how do you say that this patient has got APLA syndrome in short we call it APLA syndrome how do you say that this patient has APLA syndrome now there are certain criteria and the criteria which is criteria and classification which is nowadays followed is the Sydney uh, classification and criteria whereby there are uh, two aspects of it one is the clinical aspect that means uh, this patient must have had either number one three or more pregnancy losses in early pregnancy before 10 weeks of period of gestation or there has been some pregnancy loss beyond 10 weeks of gestation but there is no ultrason ultrasonically proved morphological deformity or there are incidences of preterm delivery before 32 weeks of period of gestation in the presence of various types of disorders like preeclampsia, eclampsia and other obstetric problems. Now this is the clinical criteria. There is another criteria which is a laboratory criteria and we are mainly concerned with three types of uh, three, three different types of factors namely number one anti-cardiolipid antibody lupus anticoagulant and uh, this beta 2 glycoprotein 1 now these three essentially form the total uh, anti-phospholipid syndromes now we won't, won't go into the details but uh, if these are elevated and their subgroups are elevated namely IgG, IgM and all these if these are elevated then you label a patient as antiphospholipid syndrome a patient with antiphospholipid syndrome APLA syndrome now how do we treat these patients there are again criteria and uh, uh, different classifications and uh, we normally give these patients very early in pregnancy we start with aspirin low dose aspirin and along with it in certain cases we have to add uh, low dose heparin uh, now which patient will require aspirin which patient will require heparin this is for essentially the the person the physician concerned who deals with uh, these uh, connective tissue disorders uh, he decides in collaboration with the, with the obstetrician and uh, the patients are supposed to continue with these uh, medicines and uh, with the hope that she should deliver a live healthy baby actually uh, in layman's term what happens uh, exactly is uh, there is an intrinsic problem of the body whereby there is thrombosis of the blood now this leads to apla syndrome now we are supposed to stop this process of thrombosis otherwise if the thrombus thrombosis occurs this thrombus is going to uh, affect the development of the child the growing fetus now to stop this thrombosis we have to use certain medications namely aspirin and uh, at times heparin as well to stop this process of thrombosis now while the pregnancy goes on we keep on doing uh, the investigations mainly the radiological investigations as to see whether there is 
any possibility of any um, placental insufficiency and we do other tests as well including blood pressure, the clinical examination and all these tests are done uh, with the hope that finally we can give the mother a healthy child. Thank you.